Hello, hello, my amazing creative friends, Oksantia here again, and today we are watching the time lapse of how I created my vector fabric collection. Uh, it has only two patterns for now, but this is the reference photo that started it all. It was taken by me in my garden and in San Diego, and I really loved the interesting shapes of these flowers. So I created a sketch and uh, on paper, and then I uh, started creating the shapes and the outlines in Adobe Illustrator CC over on my computer. So uh, you can see that the shapes are not super even. I love to work in rough uh, kind of shapes. I don't really clean up as I go at first and I clean up a little later as you will see. And here I have been kind of working on all the shapes and if there are any little bumps, I just let them be for now. And I don't really clean up as I go at first in kind of the first round. So I base my uh, lines on the sketch loosely. I don't really uh, keep a very close track of the original lines that I draw because I uh, use the sketch more of a, as a guide than anything else. All right, so I actually drew the sketch uh, during my uh, pattern group coaching membership a live co-working call we do monthly inside of my pa pattern membership uh, over on Oxantia Textile Design School. And uh, then in the next few weeks, I took this file and right here I actually started cleaning up and making sure the lines are smoother. I didn't kind of, I don't perfect them 100%, but I try my best to clean up the biggest bumps. And if I need to draw over something, I kind of do it. And you can see here that I am getting rid of the bumps. Then I grouped every element. Uh, I was having a bit of a trouble with this little thing, so I had to expand it and to make sure that it works. I'm not sure why that only one what was not working for me, but oh well, it happens. So I expanded it and remade it and then grouped all the elements and started coloring them using the paint bucket tool in Adobe Illustrator. So I kept coloring uh, the little petals. I did not have a specific idea beforehand uh, when I had the photo. I was just inspired by the shapes. So I kind of uh, go along with the process and uh, come up with the coloring. But in this particular case, you can see on the left that I was using my Oxantia brand colors, which I use for uh, my online school and for many designs because I like uh, the consistency consistency of the brand colors. Even though you don't necessarily have to use only particular colors, I like to get started with them as a base. And then if I want to change them to something top completely different, I am fine with that. But in this case, I stayed with my general brand color family. All right, so I keep going with all of the elements one by one, and it was all done on the live call with my uh, members of my uh, group pattern group coaching membership uh, over on Accenture School. And I um, try to create a creative project and show it as I go along and explain what I do, explain, answer questions about it, share the tools, and share, I shared the audiobook I was listening to while I was drawing and also uh, my students also share what they are working on while we are on the call. So it's always super fun and very uh, creative atmosphere as well as supportive and kind. So I always enjoy that. So I added those dots, but they were kind of the lines were too thick, so I deleted them. And then I uh, decided to remove any close to horizontal lines, except for one, I think, in the, the elements, and I just uh, made them a little bit more diagonal, the leaves and those little buds, so that they kind of flow together a little better in the pattern. So I was just kind of putting everything together. I was using the actions uh, that I created for myself and that I teach in my Pattern It Up online course. Um, if you will be wondering what are those actions that I was using, those are made by me and I teach and you can download them um, if you are a student of the Pattern It Up 
course. All right, so this is the final result. I had to fix up a few things like this one because it was sticking out too much, but I just go back and forth and I test it on a large circle like this that I have an action for to speed up the process. And then I took some of those leaves and buds and I recolored them to be blue and uh, green. And then I changed it to mostly mint green shades. Uh, just kind of on a whim <laughs> and then I decided to work um, on this kind of textured flowy uh, botanical pattern to go with my first one which was based on those supporting elements of buds and leaves so you can see here I am putting them together rather randomly filling up the empty spaces and kind of using the separate elements or the clusters of elements that I originally created to uh, tuck them behind each other and if you have an overlapping pattern like this so where every little branch and leaf have to grow out of each other it is a good idea to be very careful and repeat everything a few times just to make sure that everything is correct. So I tested it out again on a large circle and I have my two patterns from my collection ready. So I uploaded them right away to my spoon flower fabric wall, home goods and wallpaper shop and you can see the products now. Would you like to learn how I built a creative business with my vector patterns? Here is my webinar recording that I release to you today for free, as, which is called Three Secrets to Building a Successful Lifestyle Business Designing Repeat Patterns. This is actually a workshop along with a workbook that you can download and work on your own business as you go along the webinar and as you listen to it you'll be able to have action steps so it is a very much hands-on uh, full of ideas and inspiration for your own creative business as a textile designer you can access this free webinar recording with the link in the description uh, you will be taken to a page where you can sign up and watch this recording and work along with it I have gotten some great feedback for this webinar, so I hope you check it out as well. Remember, the link is in the description under this video. Enjoy! If you like this video, please give me that like and also subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and by also clicking the notification bell so that you do not miss any of my new videos. Also, please share this video with your own creative friends if you know somebody who might find this video helpful.